Hello, seventh grade. Let's talk about your IXL assignment today. You're doing really good on it. Also, Mrs. Morton and I are really excited to say hi to you guys in our Zoom conferences today coming up. So looking forward to talking to you then. Um, let's take a look. We're going to get into more geometry today, a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more fun. Let's take a look. So we're going to do finding measures of complementary, supplementary, vertical, and adjacent angles. So if we click in this, I'm going to split my screen here so I can show you. Some of these are pretty easy, but once we get into the word problems, they're a little bit trickier. I'll show you. So it's telling you that this whole angle, this red angle is at 80 degrees. So if this angle is 50, 50 plus what is going to give you that 80? Well, 50 plus 30, right? Once again, when it forms in X shape like this, these are vertical angles. So if it's 70 on this side, it has to be 70 on the other side. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Once again, it's showing you that this whole angle is P. So 50 plus 30 is going to give you P. That means P has to be 80 degrees. Okay, let's look at this one. A straight line, remember, is 180 degrees. So if this is 80, 80 plus what is going to give you that straight line? Well, 80 plus 100. Okay, let's look at a harder one. Um, okay, so let's look at this. This one's not really difficult, but it just has a lot of lines. So once again, this is going to be an X shape. So if 60 is up here, that means S has to be 60, right? They just throw in that 80 to try to confuse you. Okay. Once again, look at this one. This, These three angles, one, two, three, they have to form this straight line. So 63 plus 78, look, 63 and 78, okay, equal, that's 11. 13, 141, and to make a straight line, it's 180. So 180 minus 141, okay? Remember, you got to borrow. 10 minus 1 is 9. It's going to be 39 degrees, that last one, right? All, right? All right, let's look at word problems now. A little bit trickier, but you just got to walk through them. So the measure of the measure of an angle is 44 times the measure of its complementary angle. What is the measure of each angle? So remember, complementary means adding up to 90. So the measure of an angle, which we don't know, so we're going to call that, I'll call it angle B, okay, is 44 times the measure of its complementary angle, right? So plus 44 times that angle, and together they equal 90, right? I always got to do a little algebra. We got to put these together. So 1B plus 44B, you get 45B equals 90. Okay. If we divide this side by 45, we divide this side by 45. Okay. Let me make sure I set that up right. The measure of an angle is 44 times the measure of its complementary angle. Yes. Okay. So 90 divided by 45, 90 divided by 45 goes into 90, two times right now. So we know one angle is 92. And to get that other angle, it has to equal 90. So 2 plus 1 is going to equal 90. 2 plus 88. Right, there you go. Let's do one more. An angle measures, so an angle, we're going to call it, I'll call it angle C this time measures 170 less than the measure of its supplementary. So an angle measures 170 less than the angle of its supplementary. So C, so an angle measures 170 less than, so C plus C minus 70, 170 equals supplementary, so 180. Okay. So now we just got to put these together. So 1C plus 1C, you got 2C minus 170 equals 180. Okay, I got to get C by itself now. So I got to add 170 to this side, add 170 to this side. I get 2C equals so 0, 15, 350, right? Divide this side by 2, divide this side by 2. One angle has to be 350 divided by 2. So if I do that up here, Right. Seven times and five. So 175. Okay, so I'm going to say angle C is 175. 
and then that means you know that means then the other angle to get to 180 has to be five degrees right there you go all right so that is what you're going to try to do today these word problems can get a little tricky so just walk through it watch this video as many times as you need um get them wrong it's okay to get them wrong you don't have to get 100 on ixl you got to get 100 on ixl if you want a perfect score but if you guys if you get 90 if you get an 85 or higher i consider that mastering the skill so good job so if you get 85 or higher you don't have to get to 100. i know it's the score is out of 100 but it's not mandatory that you get 100 every time just try your best get some wrong so you can see why like i'm just going to get one wrong here it would have been really weird if that was the right answer um and go down and read why it's that answer this description might be, make more sense than my video so i definitely encourage you to get one wrong or if you even click on the next one um or you, sometimes they let you see an example up here but um, once again, one of these, just get it wrong. It'll take your score down a little bit, big deal. You can do it again, but get one wrong and it gives you a really good description down here of why you got it wrong and what to do. Again, that might be more helpful than my video. You might be a visual learner instead of an auditory learner. All right, so mix it up a little bit. Don't have to get 100, don't stress out. 85 or better is a good score. If you have any questions, let me know and I will see all you guys real soon. Take care.